Hi everybody and welcome back. In this video we are going to look at the player, the character and the humanoid. Alright, so, so far we've looked at parts and we haven't really looked at playing the game. So, if you look over in the Explorer window, you notice we have all of these folders down here. Now, some of these change names when we run the game. For example, Starter GUI here actually ends up being named Player GUI and is part of the player. Our Starter Pack changes its name to Backpack, alright? And then we have two special folders here where we can add scripts into our character or our player. So before we look at that, let's just, uh, with if, if you've got things in your um, your file at the moment, just uh, blank out, um, disable. So come down and turn off enable down here. So we've disabled any scripts. And with nothing running at all, we're just going to come up and we're going to play instead of run. So when we play, our character is added into the game and we appear here on the spawn point in the game. Now if we look over in our Explorer window here now, and we, we'll see that we have the item up the top here, player. So remember that the game is running at the moment. So let's click on players and expand this. And you'll see that the name of our player is inside of players. And if we open this up, you'll notice that each player gets these items in it to begin with. So the backpack, the starter gear, the player GUI, and the player scripts, as I mentioned down the bottom, which Roblox adds in a bunch of things in here, all right, that we can make use of as well. So if we open up the workspace now, you'll see that we also have up here our name up here and this is our character all right and if we expand our character so see how the boxes come up around it this is all of the contents inside of our character so they have pants on a shirt etc and then their actual body parts so head foot and if we scroll down you'll see we have a special part called a humanoid root part which is like a central core part of uh, our character and we can use that in code to move the character uh, with code and do a bunch of other things as well uh, as you can see it's sort of like the torso but it's it's an invisible part All right if we come up to um, in our character and we find the humanoid you'll see a no blue line comes up but it contains a lot of information that we can make use of uh, when we create games. So if you look down the bottom in the properties with Humanoid selected, you'll see that we have a whole bunch of things which in includes uh, how the character behaves when they die. Uh, down here, jump. So if we, this gets highlighted when the player jumps and whether they're sitting and we can use a whole bunch of things including their health and how fast they walk um, to make changes in the game. Now, the character, uh, when the game starts, is actually created on the client, on your computer, and the player is on the server. Now, when you see other players uh, in games, that means that uh, they have been replicated or copied from their client onto the server. So, whatever is on the server, you are seeing a copy of their character running around in the world and for that reason when we want to uh, change behavior or, um, of a character or a player we do it on the client so we'll go ahead and stop the game running and we get our normal folders back so we're going to introduce now uh, a special kind of script called a local script all right, so we'll put it in, uh, we'll go in start a character. So in start a player, start a character, click on the plus, and then we're going to click on local script. So not script, but local script. If it doesn't show up, start typing local script in the search bar, and then click on it. All right, and we'll just, um, uh, we'll just leave it as local script. We won't rename this at the moment, just to remind you that it is a local script. Now, local scripts will only run on the client side so they can't influence anything on the server 
So the way we write and get our characters uh, and players is a little bit different in local scripts. So to begin with, we have a service uh, that's called players. So we'll create a variable called players with a capital P. And then we say, if we want to get a hold of a service which uh, performs some function in the game for us, we say um, game and then a colon and get service. So this is a method, a built-in function that will get this service for us and we can say players and this will get us all of the players that appeared in that list up here um, earlier. Now to get our player on our client so the player on um, the, the client machine we're going to put in here players dot local player alright so this is the it's only going to affect the uh, player on your client so not on the server at this stage and then we want to get their character so we'll type character All right now the character is a part of the player so we can say player dot character added uh, sorry player dot character now because the server and client computers can be a bit out of sync in terms of when things load. There's no guarantee of uh, whether this script will run before uh, the character has loaded into the server. So we add an extra line at the end here that will say um, player dot character uh, added and then a colon and we say wait. All right. So when if this script loads and the character is not present, so it returns nil, then it will skip over to this one and then wait for the character to be loaded. And below this, we'll create a variable for our humanoid. Now the humanoid is a part of the character, so in the character we'll say wait for child because once again if things have not quite loaded yet it can cause error so in this case we're waiting for the child that is called humanoid okay so this is all to do with clients and these are the three items that we want to gain access to to make changes in our game players We'll deal with variables um, and things like that. And if we were to give badges um, or players purchase things, then in the player, in their variables that we will create, this is where we store that information. The character is where we can influence uh, their health um, or change their speed, um, etc. Uh, well, their clothing and things. Humanoid, we can um, affect their health. Alright, so down the bottom here we could um, say example for example humanoid dot walk speed equals alright and we might set this to say a hundred when the game begins. So we've accessed the humanoid's property walk speed and we're going to set it to a hundred. So let's click on play. Alright, so nothing came up down here, but if you try to run around now, you'll notice your character runs very, very fast. Alright? Because we changed their speed to, to be 100. Alright? So this is in local scripts, where we're accessing the player, uh, and we'll, we'll just set this back to, um, say, say, 20, which is a little bit quicker than normal. So this is in the local script. Now come up to our server script service and we're going to add a script now. And we'll call this our player uh, character script. All right, so we'll get rid of our hello world and we'll get our player service again. 
I'm going to show you two ways to get the player in the character. So players equals game, and we will get the service for players. Or players. All right. Now we create a function, um, a local function, and we'll call this um, adding player. All right, and inside here we'll give it an argument that will be the player that is being added. Now, if we type players down below here and then a dot, you'll see that we have this word here, or these words player added, with a little lightning bolt next to it. So if we start typing that, you'll see it comes up in blue, and this is referred to as an event, or something that happens. So a player is joining the, the game, which is the event, and when events happen, we usually want to connect a function to it. So the way to, to connect a function is to put a colon, and you'll see the word connect will appear, add connect, and then we type the word of the function that we want to connect to that event. So, of course, we want to add the adding players. Now, you don't have the two brackets at the end when you have it like this. So it should just look like this. And when that event happens, this is going to run up here. And for now, we can just add in here, welcome player. All right. And we'll put a comma and player dot name. Okay, so when the player joins the game, this should run. So let's run the game. And you'll see, welcome player, crazy Bill. All right, now the character gets added after the, the player has been added. So we can put down here, local function, all right, adding character. All right, so we've got a new function. Now we've got a new event that we can use down here. Now it runs off the player that was added. So if we come up, uh, we'll run it inside of here, which we may need to just move our function up the top here. So it's above this one. Sorry about the confusion there. All right, so inside of here, the player dot actually, so player um, dot character added and we want to connect the function adding character now the, the helper code didn't come up there however this is an event that's going to happen after the player is added we're adding the character. So we'll put up in here print whoops print welcome character and then character dot name. And we'll just move this up here so you can see what's going on. Alright, so that's all the lines that we have in here. So let's see how we go when we run that. All right, and you'll notice that it says welcome player first and then welcome character. So the character has been added, the player and the character. All right, now this is all uh, well and good. We understand how to use functions in this way. Now what we're going to do is simply, I'll show you the simpler, simplified um, and better way to do this. So highlight all of that, um, which you can also just um, in your script, if you hit Command or Control A, and then right click and toggle comment. So we'll just comment that out. Normally, when we write this, we will simply write game dot players. So we're directly op, um, directly accessing the players service dot and then players added. And we say connect. And then we open a function. And inside of here, we'll type player and hit enter. So this is referred to as um, an anonymous function. So it doesn't have a name like adding character, but 
this is the per we, we know what the purpose is here so we run the function inside of the connect and we still pass in the player all right and you'll notice that uh, we can if we put in print and say welcome player again then we can say player.name and we'll run these together in a moment and then once our player has come in we can say player dot character add it and once again connect and create an anonymous function with character as the parameter and now we can run our print statement again and say welcome character and character dot name right so rather than writing all of these lines of code that's uh, spread out with separate functions we achieve the same thing here so let's run that and see that it works the same way you see player has printed and then the character has printed all right so that's the preferred way of writing the code but I thought I would set it out this way first so you can see that this is achieving the same as what this is all right so make sure you keep both versions so you can refer to them but we will be using this um, in our game project all right so that covers uh, our the basics of our player character and humanoid so we'll move on to the last couple of uh, uh, lessons for our fundamental section uh, and in the next one we're going to uh, learn how to create parts just using code All right so I will see you in that lesson